Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the first topic of uh, tonight's uh, daily debate. Now, we're going to be talking about the Foundation for Liberty, uh, the Friedrich Naumann Foundation for Liberty, and we're going to be talking about the activities and objectives. And we're joined here in the studio to shed more light on this foundation uh, with uh, Dr. Ronald uh, Meinardos, uh, the Regional Director of the Friedrich Naumann Foundation for Liberty. Dr. Meinrauers, uh, first off, thank you very much for joining us this evening. Uh, can you please tell us uh, more about the activities and objectives of this foundation? Well, first of all, thank you for having me. I think the, the movie you shot uh, was a very, very uh, comprehensive uh, prescription and description of what we're doing. The foundation is actually celebrating this year 50 years of international activities. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, we've been around for many years. Uh, we started our projects in the Arab world 50 years ago with a media training program in Tunis. Mm -hmm. uh, and in Egypt, we started uh, uh, our work 35 years ago. And actually, mm -hmm. the very building we're sitting in, the Egyptian Radio and Television Union, has all along been one of our partners. So why am I saying this? Uh, not to impress you, mm -hmm. but to say that uh, for our foundation, training of journalists has always been a core business, although mm -hmm. we're non-profit. Uh, but the idea of Friedrich Naumann, and, and it's, it's very nice that you also uh, uh, quoted him, is that, uh, and it's very relevant for Egypt and for the Arab world at this time of history, that for a democracy to function, you do not no only need a good constitution, you do not only need institutions uh, and laws, you also need the people who understand these instruments. Mm. And uh, it's very important that the people uh, the citizen of a society is, is trained in, in, in working in a positive way in the democratic framework. And, and our foundation is assisting. It's very important because we are having to do here with issues which are politically re related. It's not us coming here and, and telling people what to do. That's a very important point I make. We are working, and there's not a single program and project of the Norman Foundation we will not find a local Egyptian partner. So mm -hmm. we're here. And I can uh, emphasize this uh, upon invitation uh, of our Egyptian partners, may they be government partners or may they be civil society or non-governmental partners. Mm -hmm. And we're conducting uh, all sorts of activities, which I could get into, but I think it would be almost too much. Well, tell us more about uh, your visit. Tell us uh, more about the objectives of uh, being part of this very critical uh, political change in Egypt. and. Uh, having a lot of issues such as uh, liberty and the freedom of expression. Tell us more about the Foundation's role in, such, uh, in Egypt and under such uh, a critical stage that we're going through. Yeah, right first now. of all, I must say that uh, we haven't been here since yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, the Foundation has been here uh, since, uh, since uh, 35 years, and uh, we would uh, say we are a part uh, of uh, the relationship between the Federal Republic of Germany and the Arab Republic of Egypt. Uh, we must uh, understand that international relations today are not limited to the relations of governments and to economic players uh, or to, uh, to sports associations. Uh, international relations today also have the component of civil society, uh, of, of, of um, people, members of political parties meeting, of, of, of academics interested in political issues meeting. And, uh, and we are facilitating this political dialogue. This is a very important component of us. But now your question was very precisely related to the uprisings or the, mm -hmm. to the revolution of, of January 25, uh, two years ago. Um, of course, this has impacted us. Mm -hmm. uh, and there have been moments also uh, where uh, there was a very critical, uh, should I say, approach regarding international institutes dealing with civic education in this country. Uh, I'm very happy to say that this has been sorted out. Uh, this has been sorted out to the extent that uh, just a couple of weeks ago, I personally signed a, a cooperation agreement uh, with the Egyptian Minister for Youth. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, this cooperation agreement foresees that uh, we, we cooperate in the field of civic education for Egyptian youngsters. Uh, we have uh, a cooperation agreement signed last year with the Middle Eastern News Agency. I just came from an activity uh, this, this afternoon where 
we were assisting and training Egyptian journalists in the usage of social media. This gives you an idea of what kind of things we're doing. But mm -hmm. And uh, this activity was not in the sense that it was uh, directed by, by foreign trainers. No, we are, we are connected to, 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 uh, to Egyptian trainers. We have a good, good relationship to, 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 to such individuals. And only in special cases uh, we, would, uh, we would actually invite foreign expertise where we think that this is very useful where they have something to offer which is not available in the Egyptian market. But usually we, we get along very well with local means. Yes, well you, you spoke about uh, civic education, you talked about uh, diplomatic dialogue and uh, diplomatic relations. Do you think that Egypt is now, uh, would you call it a fertile uh, soil, would you call it a fertile land to promote uh, such liberalism or do you think that there will still be uh, some sort of a struggle to promote this? First of all, um, it's a particular challenge to speak in Egypt uh, in public uh, about liberalism. Mm -hmm. uh, the word liberalism is highly, hi highly controversial because uh, it is associated, uh, uh, wrongly associated with mm -hmm. certain uh, policies and certain behavior uh, which is uh, not in, in sync with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with maybe Arabic culture and maybe with m Muslim culture. Mm -hmm. But then I must say uh, this is a political issue which is a partisan issue and therefore uh, the liberal people in Egypt they would refrain from using the term liberalism and that's mm -hmm. not a speciality uh, to Egypt. If you go to some parts of Asia, if you go to some parts of, uh, of, of South America, there also the term liberalism is not uh, in, high, in high regard. But it's mm -hmm. not about the labels. And this we always try to make, make clear. Liberalism is about uh, the promotion of, of individual freedom. It's about uh, uh, the rule of law. It's about human rights. It's about equality of chances. These are principles which we believe, and not only we believe, our Egyptian partners believe, are essential for a modern uh, democracy. And uh, uh, these are issues uh, which, of course, play a role if you start discussing such issues like the Constitution, if you mm -hmm. start discussing the role of political parties in the political system, if you start in political mm -hmm. systems. And uh, therefore we would have a liberal approach, but uh, uh, we don't really highlight this. Uh, and if you look around, you will have difficulties in Egypt and in other Arab countries actually finding political forces which say, Ahna we are liberals, mm -hmm. because the word, uh, the term is used, it is, it's, it's, it's misused, and therefore for, should I say, tactical reasons, they avoid it. Mm -hmm. Well. Uh Doctor, you've mentioned uh, very important issues such as the Constitution, the rights of uh, uh, women and children, and these are all uh, main issues in Egypt uh, and have been under the spotlight for uh, the last couple of years. Does the Foundation have some sort of practical uh, solutions or uh, practical aspirations that they would like to meet? Now this would be taking it a, a step too far mm -hmm. uh, because uh, I mean uh, and we of course we respect uh, very much uh, not only the laws of this country this is, 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 is of course uh, uh, clear uh, but we also respect uh, uh, the rule that we are not here to intervene in political processes mm -hmm. this is not so so what I'm saying here if you're asking me later on how, what do I think of this or that this would be clearly mm -hmm. a, a personal opinion now there is a different level which is uh, is the level of education and of training mm -hmm. Uh, which uh, which means that uh, we would uh, we would offer together with our partners uh, courses in which uh, very basically uh, uh, the various components of let's say the Egyptian constitution are debated and uh, what is normal in a democratic uh, situation and Egypt is in such a situation that there are also conflicting opinions and that you discuss these and that you create uh, a sphere of dialogue. Uh, in a very small environment, if you so want. Uh, my op personal opinion is that this is lacking at the moment. There is much too little dialogue, true dialogue in the sense of people actually trying to listen to one another. And uh, maybe this is something also uh, the Egyptians, uh, if they want, they can learn from, from Europe, where we're, we're, we're uh, in, 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 in similarly revolutionary phases, uh, that the people somewhat got together and somewhat compromised, and in the end, to the benefit of everyone. Mm -hmm. Dr. Mainardos, um, what about the cooperation uh, in promoting uh, liber uh, liberalism and freedom? Is there any sort of cooperation with liberal political parties and NGOs who really fight for all these causes uh, with the uh, Frederick uh, Nauman Foundation? 
Um, there you're getting, again, into a very sensitive issue mm -hmm. because uh, political parties are political players and uh, we are not in any way inter intervening or, 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 or cooperating to the extent that we're financing these parties running campaigns. This is very important uh, mm -hmm. to, to underline. And this is some sometimes the assumption which is given uh, by some uh, not favorable commentary. What I want to say is those people who engage in political parties are individuals and citizens who take their role in society uh, uh, personally and, and strongly and they have uh, shown that they want to commit themselves and we believe that these individuals if you want to strengthen those forces who are active in society mm -hmm. are a very interesting target group and they particularly are, are in need uh, of, of training and need of understanding the rules of the game, and so far uh, you are right, uh, these are groups we would very much like to work together with. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a lot of talk also about the relationship between civil societies and the state. What is the nature, do you think, uh, should be uh, between the civil state, uh, the civil society, and the state? Should the civil society be protected by the state? And if it should be, then to what extent? I mean, I'm saying this theoretically now. Mm -hmm. uh, a democratic state is always a state uh, which uh, has uh, various powers which are divided. There's a division of power. If too much power is concentrated in one hand, this is not beneficial. And therefore, mm -hmm. civil society, just like an independent media, like an independent judiciary, uh, like an independent parliament, are all these ingredients. And, mm -hmm. and I think that particularly in Egypt, and civil society plays an important role. I think if historians of the future will look at Egypt at this part of, of history, and they will find out and they will probably say that uh, in this time, uh, uh, civil society uh, grew stronger and civil society actually became a force uh, mm. of, of, of social and political life in Egypt. And this, if you look at it historically, is, is, is a big step. Now, how civil society uses this Mm -hmm. and how it engages, uh, this is a different matter altogether. We have to also see that what we in the West often see as the civil society is but a very small part of it. Uh, if you look around Egypt, you will see very, very many initiatives which have nothing to do with politics. Uh, these are people who are working in, 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 in social projects. They work uh, in the governorates. Mm -hmm. They are assisting people who need help where the government has failed, where the state has failed. And this, I think, is a very important. And uh, I think this now you're asking, what is the relationship uh, between civil society and, and government? In our understanding, uh, the government uh, should should give a lot of space for civil society, and the government should not try to to control civil society because at the moment the government controls civil society, it actually loses the very essence uh, of its existence. Mm -hmm. Well, there are a lot of uh, concern regarding the relationship between civil society and the government. Do you think that in Egypt especially that uh, the, the lines in between are sort of blurred and a lot of people dif have different opinions? Do you think that there will be some sort of a challenge or an obstacle for the foundation to uh, help uh, flourish the uh, civil societies here? I mean, uh, so far, uh, this is only debated, mm -hmm. uh, and so far, there, should I say, is, is a lot of talk. Uh, you know, the present political situation uh, with the elections coming up probably doesn't allow for this to be enacted uh, very soon. But uh, what we see uh, is uh, various uh, drafts of an NGO law. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I hear from my Egyptian brothers and sisters, I would say mm -hmm. this now, from the colleagues and the people we work with, is not very favorable. Uh, they mm -hmm. see exactly what I was mentioning before, an effort uh, on the side of the government uh, to exert control. And this uh, could be interpreted in a way that, uh, that uh, the very idea of civil society mm -hmm. Uh, uh, is, 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 is somehow uh, becoming problematic. Mm -hmm. uh, what I think uh, is, 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 is very uh, fruitful is that, uh, and very positive, that there's a, an, an incredible debate going on in Egypt, a very lively debate going on, on all sides uh, of the political spectrum. And uh, I can only hope that, uh, that once, uh, once uh, there is a parliament uh, which has a certain uh, also mandate by the people mm -hmm. uh, that uh, law will be enacted which also 
uh, is in sync with international standards. Uh, what I always tell also my, my Egyptian friends and also the people I have a chance to meet in government, mm -hmm. uh, who ideologically I would not always uh, be, 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 be on one level with, but uh, mm -hmm. Egypt is, is a democracy today. Uh, your president uh, is going about and saying we are the new democracy. Uh, and uh, yes, but uh, then you have to be measured by the standards of democracy, mm -hmm. uh, very fair so. And uh, these standards are that there is a civil society which has certain privileges also, and the state has certain obligations to defend these privileges. And uh, this is.